you should see a little pop-up notification that we are recording this session. Welcome everyone. I am joined by Miracle and Emily from Sound Transit. Before passing it off to our guests, I'd like to introduce um, myself. I'm your career development assistant director. Uh, and I also want to acknowledge that I am joining you from the ancestral lands of the Duwamish and Coast Salish people including lands touching the shared waters of all tribes and bands within the Duwamish, Suquamish, Puyallup, Tulalip, and Muckleshoot nations. I honor with gratitude the land that allows us to gather in community today, albeit virtually. Um, a few housekeeping items. So with our employer pop-ups, I just wanted to share for folks in this space who have not yet signed up for an informational interview time slot and would like to, we do have a few slots left for our 3 p.m. and 3.30 p.m. time to meet with Sound Transit. So this is an intimate space where you can continue asking Miracle, Emily, and also our third guest, Megan, any questions related to Sound Transit, career journey, et cetera, for those who are internship searching. We have been actively putting those vacancies in Evan's jobs. For those of you who are job searching, we are also doing the same. So instead of, you know, creating different pathways for you all to connect on LinkedIn, setting up your own informational interviews, career development has done that work for you. Um, so feel free to DM me in Zoom if you would like that link to the Microsoft Teams space and we'll sign you up for a slot. We have a few more career development events. So there is an employer pop-up and info session with the city of Seattle happening next Tuesday at one. We just secured um, the Arizona governor's office of strategic planning and budgeting info session that's also happening on um, February 15th. And then we are collaborating with Evans faculty, Sharon Kiyoko for a session on careers in public finance. All of those details are on our link tree, which I will drop in the Zoom chat, um, but those are all my housekeeping announcements. Miracle, I'm passing it off to you. Miracle, just let us know that um, you graduated from the executive MPA program at Evans. So welcome Yay. back to this space. Um, and thank you for making the time to engage with our current students. Yes, okay. thank you so much for having us today. Um, so I guess I'll kick it off. Hello and welcome. Um, we're happy to have you here today um, to learn more about Sound Transit as an organization. Um, our hope is to help everyone understand who we are, um, what exactly we do, and how you can leverage your MPA and public administration education um, to work for an organization like Sound Transit. Um, and so our, your hosts are me, Miracle McLeod. Um, my pronouns are she, hers, and um, I'm the Assistant Chief of Staff of the Operations Department. And I'm gonna hand it over to my colleague from HR. Hi everybody, my name is Emily Von Zela. I also use she, her pronouns and I am a senior talent advisor with our HR department. And um, we may be joined by my kitty, Vincent. He's in the room with me. So if he walks in front of the camera, that's what's going on. <laughs> It, thank you, Emily. And then we also, she's not here right now, but Megan's going to join a little bit later today um, in the informational interview sessions. Um, so that's where you'll, where you'll see her, but she's the chief of staff of operations. Um, we're a large department, so there's two of us. <laughs> uh, and then, so here's a little agenda. So what you'll be hearing today is, um, you know, a bit about Sound Transit, more about our system, what life at Sound Transit is like, what's next for you know, our system expansion, as well as for you all as students about to graduate and you know, maybe apply and work for Sound Transit. And then of course, time for questions and answers. Um, and so with that, I'm going to hand it over to Emily. Thanks, Miracle. So uh, Sound Transit, what we do, we plan, build, and operate a regional transit system to improve mobility for the Puget Sound region, in a nutshell. Uh, we, um, our vision is to enthusiastically transform the map of central Puget Sound, making our transit service as iconic to the region as the Space Needle, Mount Rainier, and the ferry system. Woo! 
Our mission is to connect more people to more places to make life better and create equitable opportunities for all. And a big part of how we do that is to incorporate our six values of collaboration, passenger focus, inclusion and respect, safety, integrity, and quality. Um, these come into play, you know, it's more than just a moniker. It comes into play every day while we're doing our work, while we're making decisions, while we're planning. This is something that we always come back to, and it's very much a part of the culture at Sound Transit. And then um, if you're not super familiar with our transit system, um, this is just kind of a map of the area showing you um, some of the different um, communities that we are either currently serving or hope to be serving soon. Um, and one of the things that I didn't realize about Sound Transit until I started working here was that this agency is unique in the way it spans multiple counties and areas. We're not just Seattle Metro, we're not just King County, we're going through the whole Puget Sound region as a, as a whole. And now we have a little video. Let's hope it works, everybody. Fingers crossed. My favorite mode is definitely double-decker buses. <laughs> My childhood dream is to, is to be a double-decker bus operator. <laughs> um, can I operate a bus? <laughs> <laughs> What do I love about my job? I absolutely love that every day is different. Uh, every day there's a new challenge I get to tackle. I love working on something, on a project that is good for the community, that helps the residents get around easier, get to their job, get to school. I mean, I love working for the public. Um, and I love helping articulate a, a, a message um, to get the public engaged and invested in in our mission, uh, which is about them. We're changing the landscape of the region and uh, we're all playing this integral part in building the, this transit system that was not non-existent. Every time I get on the train, especially to do something, you know, go to the airport, you know that it didn't used to exist or remember it when it didn't exist. And we were all here making sure it really happened. And it was really hard at times, but People stuck with it, the, the region kind of stuck with us, and we stuck with our jobs. And in the end, we just built something. It's really powerful and plenty more to build. I would say Sound Transit's impacting the Puget Sound by allowing uh, for easy access to get different cultures, different diverse, uh, more diverse people together. It, it, it answers the question all of us ask, like, how do we make, how do we make this last? How do we make the most of the time we have here and make things sustainable. I think people see us as the expert in mass transit and I think we need to rise to that expectation that we're here to provide that mass transit solution um, for the people in, in the greater Seattle area. They always say it, you know, it's a hundred year system. So it's, you know, you're literally creating a legacy for the future and it, it's every job that we do here is contributing to that. So you could work in finance or work in communications or work in product development or wherever you are, um, but if you're here with these colleagues, you're building a legacy that'll be here for 100 years plus. And this is who we are. This is just a photo of everybody um, at Sound Transit. I'm not gonna lie, this photo is probably from like 2018, but we so have there's grown. more of us now. <laughs> yeah, there's much more. Um, but you saw the video, it's a great place to work. We're doing awesome things. Um, and so now we're going to head into a bit about our system. And so 
here's sort of a snapshot of what our 2041 system is going to look like. We are embarking on one of the largest system expansions in the country, which means, you know, there's a lot going on. So we have our links, we have a multiple modes of transportation. So we have our link trains, our ST express buses, the sounder train and um, our stride buses, which is which is new. And we're gonna talk about that a little bit later, but you know, we have a lot to do and we have a good 20 more years to get it done. So that's, that's pretty exciting. Um, I'm gonna talk a bit through our modes of transportation. So our link light rail is one that I think most people are familiar with. You all are probably aware that we just opened our North gate alignment, um, which has a couple um, stations in U district. So it's pretty cool. Um, our link light rail is a rapid service. It runs 20 hours a day. The trains leave every six minutes um, during peak hours and every 10 to 15 minutes during midday and evening hours. Um, and so each light rail, I don't know if you care about this, but each light rail car carries about 200 riders, um, which includes standing riders as well. Um, we have our ST Express regional buses, which I feel like people are less familiar with, but maybe you all are, maybe you all are aware, but it serves King, Pierce, and Snohomish County. There are 28 routes um, and they provide limited stops. And so it's a long distance service that connects riders to major urban and employment centers in King, Pierce, and Snohomish County. And it's also sort of a a quicker mode of transportation than you would say, you know, the bus, the King County with multiple stops. These have limited stops and they're, they're express buses. Um, let's see, what is next? We have our sounder trains and our sounder trains are pretty, pretty darn cool. Um, they run from Everett to Lakewood into downtown Seattle um, and back. And it's primarily during the commuter hours we do have some special event trains um, that you'll see for Seahawks games, Sounder games, some Mariner games, and the Puyallup Fair. Um, but these are really good for people who live outside of the city. It's um, a more direct way to get into downtown. Um, and then we have our stride service, which is launching in 2024. Um, and it's going to be a bus rapid transit that. It's gonna be one of the first projects completed for our voter approved plan in 2016. Um, and it's, it's gonna be a really cool service that we're gonna be offering. And it's a bus service, a bus rapid transit service. So kind of similar to the rapid ride that you may have seen around the red buses for King County Metro, um, but serving a different area. Um, so let's talk about what you need to know about ST. We've talked about a lot, but we're gonna continue. So that's exciting. Um, our, so here's a little bit about um, the ballots. So, and our, the work that we do. So Sound Transit's tax, taxing authority was authorized by the state legislator. Um, all taxes were approved by voters in three separate elections that you see here in 1996, 2008 and 2016. Um, and this slide really summarizes the main elements of each of the three voter approved measures. Um, and the system expansion incorporates all three measures. So you kind of see a trend where things are just expanding. There are 21 link stations, 25 and then 37. And we just are moving along and ensuring that we're connecting people to the places that they need to go. Um, so next is our contractor model. So you, I told you a bit about our different modes of transportation, and this kind of highlights our partnerships with different um, agencies around Snohomish, Pierce, and King County. So our ST Bus Express, you can see we we partner with all three, um, King King Met oh, Metro, we just call it really Metro Metro Mini Transit and Pierce Transit. Our link light rail operators are um, through King County Metro. Um, our sounder commuter rail, we 
we work with BNSF and Amtrak, and then our Tacoma Link, which you have seen if you go, if you've been to a concert at Tacoma Dome, it's more of a streetcar sort of service, but it's being expanded. That's all purely run by Sound Transit and our own operators. So tax and budgets, which is kind of fun for probably people like yourselves in the MPA program, where our money comes from, you can see um, sort of the breakdown of where the money comes from here in this beautiful chart. Um, and then we break it down even further to kind of show you where we spend the most. And as you can see, capital projects are a big one. So capital refers to the dollar spent, spent to build new light rail and other services. Um, so that is that, beautiful colors. Um, so sub area equity is also an important piece and it speaks to the different areas that we serve and just identifies that the taxes stay local. So taxpayers um, in each of Sound Transit sub areas pay for projects and services that benefit the people in those sub areas. The agency's age, we're about 28 years old. Um, we might be 29, but um, that it, we're a young agency. We're still in that um, growth stage and the maturing stage. Um, and so that just goes with being a public agency, you know, that most of our records are available to the public through a public disclosure request. Um, being a public agency means our procurements and contracts take a little longer, which is why it takes much more time to build out each of our alignments. Um, the process must comply with state and federal laws and requirements, and we operate in a highly political environment which means we have to work really closely with different municipalities um, and different groups around the greater Seattle area to ensure that we are giving um, the communities what they need um, and just taking, taking their concerns into consideration as we build out our system. And so now I'm gonna hand it over to Emily to talk through life at Sound Transit. Thanks, Miracle. Um, life at Sound Transit, in short, is pretty great. Um, we have a wonderful um, internal community and within that, a number of employee resource groups. Um, I think we started with just a handful and um, now if, you know, a group of, um, of employees uh, come together and decide that another, um, you know, aspect of our society or whatever needs to be represented, then another one gets added to to the board. But we have a number, including Blacks Empowering Success in Transit, uh, Latinx in Transportation. We've got a Pride group. We have the Sound Transit Pacific Islander Asian American Mastermind, known as SPAM. Um, we have anti-racist community, women empowering sound transit. So just a number of um, different groups and those kind of um, also lead into a number of resource networks where, um, you know, if employees aren't necessarily a member of the resource group or of the resource groups, there are a lot of options um, and resources available for them to use if they need to research things or if they need to call on any of these groups to help them with specific projects. All of that is there and available to the entire um, community of employees. And I just wanted to add one more note about this. It's, it's part of our campaign that we are doing sort of to ensure that we are inclusive and equitable with our staff as well as externally with our public and just really owning in on that. And so that's, that's what this slide also speaks to. And uh, these groups host a number of events throughout the years, um, cultural events, um, awareness campaigns, um, things that line up with, um, you know, Black History Month, Latinx History Month. So um, especially when we are on campus and all working together, it provides a lot of really fun opportunities to get together with your coworkers, to, you know, do some extra social engagement, see people you haven't seen in a while and just kind of hang out um, in the name of a positive cause. 
So I'm gonna take it back over and say, what's next? And this is kind of where we get into what's next for the agency and also what's next for you all as you're about to graduate and you know, considering different areas to work. Um, we'll talk through opportunities at Sound Transit. All right, let's hope this video works, everybody. Here we go. Yeah. Pull it up again. Up to your face. It's like my mug shot, right? <laughs> and cut. All right. I'm excited about bringing on so many more team members. I'm excited that we can create a new culture here and that everyone's voice can be heard. I'm excited about helping to make the agency a place where everyone and everything is valued and taken good care of. I'm excited about small business development. There will be small businesses that will grow in capacity and work on sound transit projects. 2019 is full of, full of growth and full of opportunity, so I'm looking forward to uh, everything that lays ahead. I'm excited about building the operations team and about bringing great talent to this organization and truly helping shape it for its future. I am excited that we are moving along. We're providing transportation to the region and making like kind of like the New York of the West Coast. It's pretty awesome. It's pretty exciting. Part of making that difference because knowing that I can help the organization really kind of build a foundation and is really critical to you know making sure we're able to deliver on these voter plans initiatives. I'm excited about the values plans that we're running out as an agency. There is a lot, a lot of work that has to be done in the next five years. There's been a lot of um, sharing of information about what was done in the past, but also embracing what all the new employees bring to the table. I'm excited that I am part of a team that's going to deliver the largest public transit expansion program in the country. If you're willing to raise your hand um, and get involved and have a voice and give your thoughts, like you, you can make a difference. And so in that video, you saw a lot of excitement about the next the years to come, um, and you kind of could see a little glimpse of the different types of departments we have. So we had procurement, um, operations, I think safety was on there. And so there's so many ways that you can leverage what you're learning now and um, apply it at different positions at Sound Transit. Um, but I wanted to give you all a, a sort of a glimpse into the future of Blink, and this is, just shows you that we are going to have a lot of jobs to come and we just are going to be hiring like crazy to help this expansion. Um, and like I said, 2041, it seems so far away, it seems so far away. Um, but now I'm going to hand it over to Emily to talk about some internship opportunities. Thank you. Um, so, uh, we are gearing up for our um, internship program for the summer of 2022. We're anticipating um, about 30 different interns within the program this year across a variety of different departments. Some of them um, noted here, um, communications, design, um, operations, um, the executive um, department for a lot more of the kind of business um, leaning uh, work. Um, so there's a lot of different opportunities just depending on what you're interested in and what you want to focus on. Um, we have a number of different positions currently posted on our internship job board, but they're not all up yet. So if you take a look at the board and you're not really seeing what you want to be seeing or what you're interested in, definitely check back because we're going to be adding some more positions over the next few weeks. And I'll drop some links in the chat after I stop sharing. Um, Thanks. But that's pretty much it. Thank you yeah. for joining us today and listening to us um, talk about our wonderful agency that we work at, Sound Transit. Um, and I'm gonna stop sharing and then we can open it up if there's time for questions and answers. <laughs>
Thanks, Miracle. Thank you, Emily. So yes, we have plenty of time for Q&A for our students in this space. Feel free to raise your hand, unmute yourself. I'm also happy to read out questions that are going to be sent through the chat. Um, we're going to be in here roughly until like 1.50, so plenty of time. So just dropped a link to um, our intern, some of our internship postings in the chat if you want to take a look. And I'll also drop in the career um, site for job postings at Sound Transit as well. Um, I'll jump in. Uh, so I'm graduating in June, um, but also I think my class schedule is like, I think some of us in the second years could start in spring. Like what from the job, like not the internship angle, like what's the what's the pipeline? Like I'm not an engineer. And so like my mind sometimes is like, well, sound transit, like that's a lot of like transportation engineers, civil engineers, like for an MPA grad, like what, what's your sense of the pipeline of that? I don't know. It's not really entry level. Like we're grad students, like we have experience, but uh, what's that kind of pipeline of jobs that are kind of the sweet spot for folks with evidence that you can kind of think of? Emily, do you want me to speak to that a little bit? Yeah, if you could, just from your experience, that'd be great. Yeah. And I can fill in. Okay. So um, that's, a, that's a good question. A lot of people see us as like a, a design and construction agency, right? But we do so much more than that. Um, one of the things that I did after I graduated um, was we have a strategic business office and I worked on our agency policies and procedures. So you'll see jobs like that. There's also um, different jobs around organizational effectiveness, which also live in SB or the Strategic Business Services Office. Um, and so those are also opportunities to utilize what you've learned. Um, even in design and construction and engineering, I also did project management and project coordination on the design side. And so you can utilize some of the things that you've learned and apply them that way. Um, and then we also, like now I work in operations as a chief of staff, which is um, a strategy sort of strategy like position. So those are some of the opportunities that you can that you can see um, that you can apply to. I'm not sure exactly what's coming down the pip pipeline right now, but I'll I'll throw a link in the chat. And Emily, do you have anything to add? Um, just that. Uh, from the time that I've been here, I've learned just how how much flexibility there can be around, um, you know, job interest or you know, subject interest translating into a job at Sound Transit. So there's a lot of different options for people with various various backgrounds, and because Sound Transit is so um, dedicated to um, internal mobility and um, kind of upward movement. Um, there's a lot of different opportunities for you to, you know, if there's an obvious career path that you see that you want to follow, like if you get in as an associate project manager and you decide, I really love project management, there are different levels that you can start to um, take on and move with different projects and things like that. But if you come in at um, more of an entry level position and you know, enjoy what you're doing, but decide you might be a little bit more interested in the work that this department over here is doing. There's a lot of opportunity for either lateral movement or upward movement, but switching departments. So um, we're really open to kind of seeing what people are interested in, what skills they've developed and how they want to continue to develop those skills. So there's a lot of options just kind of based on what your interests are and what you want to be doing once you get here. And I also, I should have mentioned this earlier, we also have a government and community relations office. So a lot of, and we have a lot of Evans School grads that are um, in our, we call it GCR, but government and community relations office. Um, we also have our communications team, which also has a handful, more than a handful of um, MPA students as well. And the other thing I wanted to mention is we're really building out our Office of Civil Rights, Equity and Inclusion. Um, and so that there are plenty of opportunities there if DEI is like a specialty that you wanna get into and understand how to push that forth in a public agency setting. So that's another, that's another um, opportunity that's available. 
And there was a question about job alerts. Um, yes, you can, I believe so. So I just dropped in the, the website for our jobs, all of our jobs. And I, I believe you can sign up for an alert. I should know this. You can, I don't remember off the top of my head and I apologize for this part. I'm not sure if you have to set up um, an application account first. Um, so that might be the first step, but then you do um, have the options of setting up alerts for either any new job that hits the board, or if you want to try to kind of tailor it down towards a specific area and just get those alerts, you can do that too. Did that answer your question? Yes, yes thank you. And then, um, it's something I looked up before we started that I forgot to mention during the presentation. Um, we are looking to add about 120-ish new jobs over the course of 2022. So um, yeah, if you're looking at the, the job board, and again, you're not really seeing a position that's really striking you, keep checking back because we're going to be continuing to post throughout the year. Yes. Thank you, Emily. Um, there's a chat, there's a question in the chat about some aspects of the role of our roles that we find most exciting. Emily, I'm going to hand that over to you first to take. Uh, a couple. I, because I work in HR as a recruiter, I get to um, work with people who are, you know, looking for a job, who are coming into the agency for the first time. And, you know, this is kind of the next step in their career. And I find that very exciting and very fulfilling. Um, I really love the people that I work with. I think that Sound Transit is a great community um, of employees and we all work really well together and we're all kind of dedicated to the cause. Um, but I also really enjoy working for an organization that is community oriented. Before I worked here, I worked at a law school, which was, a, or I'm sorry, a law office, which was a very different environment. Um, and getting to come here where the focus is more mission driven and is more um, focused on the impact that we have to Seattle and to the community and to each other um, is something I find really satisfying. Yeah. Um, so similar to Emily, I love my coworkers. Like our coworkers are amazing. And that is one of the most exciting parts of working where, where I work, where we work. Um, another thing is you, because we're maturing as an agency and I'm a big strategy geek, I love like the problem solving and the critical thinking that I have to do as, as an assistant chief of staff to partner with the other executives in the other departments to push forth an initiative or to get a presentation ready for the board um, and to you know start to identify what does each region and each board member really find um, exciting and take that and pull it all into a presentation to get their attention. So that's one, one thing I love. Um, and then also it's just no day is the same in my, in my personal position. It's like you're doing so many different things. So it keeps you going and it keeps me motivated and keeps me like on my toes, which I, I'm a person, I don't like to do the same thing every single day. So if you're like me, then it's a cool place to work and a cool type of job to have because of that. Any other questions? You've uh, you've mentioned that Sound Transit is growing pretty rapidly. Um, I my guess is that 120 new people is a significant growth to the organization. I'm wondering if that is associated with. Uh, new roles and projects and responsibilities around the city that, uh, or around the region that Sound Transit is taking on? Um, yeah, a lot of it is coming with um, just kind of where we are in our project schedule. Um, you know, we just opened up the, the Northgate um, extension and we're working on 
um, opening up Eastlink um, next year and a bunch of others. So as um, we move forward with a lot of our planning and design work and things kind of get to the next step where they're operating and they're functioning on a daily basis, then we're, we have the need to fill different jobs than we had before, where some of these projects were really um, heavy on the design emphasis five years ago. Now we need people to, um, you know, keep the facilities updated, make sure that safety is being adhered to because now we have the public coming through these stations and the trains are operational. So it's interesting to see not just the growth, but the different areas the growth is taking place in because we just keep moving forward. The projects are gonna be in different phases in different years. So that's gonna kind of influence what our needs are as far as filling different roles. Anybody else, anybody? I will say this, I operations within my department. I work very closely with Emily and we are, we have a lot of new positions opening because of that transition from the design and construction phase to the operating and maintenance phase. And so, and it's so cool to see how we operate our systems. It's a whole new, a whole new world for me coming from design and construction and then our specific strategy and strategic focused office to now operations. It's like a there is a question in the chat from George. Um, in light of current circumstances, COVID persisting, with most internship postings that are live, is it anticipated that they will be remote opportunities or more of a hybrid schedule where there's chance for in-person work? That is a very good question. Uh, we're not entirely positive, but I think that if things continue moving along the path that they are and we're able to have an in-person program this year, it'll be kind of a hybrid schedule. Um, the thing that I've honestly been really happy with um, throughout the entire pandemic is Sound Transit's willingness to just kind of step back, look at the direction things are going and adapt. Like we are still largely working remotely. We were supposed to be back in January and then Omicron happened. So now maybe we're gonna be back sometime in March. Um, so if that's still the plan and we do find ourselves back in the office, a lot of us are gonna be kind of shifting to more of a flex hybrid schedule um, because we're, you know, we were able to adapt during COVID. So a lot of us kind of prefer that flexibility. So I think that that's going to extend to the internships as well. Um, just assuming that, you know, we're able to be back by then. Um, the whole thing has been kind of an exercise in rolling with it and just kind of seeing where it takes you. But um, I've been really happy with the agency's willingness to keep everybody safe, let us keep working remotely for as long as we need. So I hope that answered it. I know it's not exactly <laughs> precise, but that's kind of what we're going with right now. <laughs> Um, I see a question in the chat about what are the main projects, roles of um, the DEI, our Civil Rights um, and Inclusion Office. So they are doing a whole bunch of stuff and it's such a small team. So I know that's probably going to be growing, but one of the roles is to help. I mean, Emily, do you know more about this? I know there's support for our ERGs and our ERN groups, our employee resource groups and our employee network groups. I think that's what they're called. Um, I know there's support. We're rolling out um, an anti-racist strategy. So help supporting um, how to bring the agency along on that journey. Um, and so bringing in speakers, running um, different workshops throughout the agency. We have a lot, we have our disadvantaged business enterprise, which is working with smaller, um, you know, ensuring that we get proper representation for our projects going on um, and get the smaller businesses, the women owned businesses, the, the, um, the businesses owned by people of color into the work that we do. 
I'm trying to think what else there's there's a you can always you can already see there's a lot that they do and we're just in their little little baby department but they plug into so much um, that we do I know we're also developing a racial equity toolkit um, and they're supporting that um, and ensuring that everybody's properly trained on um, how to use it correctly and what questions to ask as we um, embark on new projects. Anything to add, Emily and Kitty? <laughs> <laughs> I think you nailed the majority of it. Um, I am also just in awe of the amount of work that they have been able to do with such a small group. And I think that as they add to the group, like they're not gonna be slowing down on projects. They're just gonna be taking on more, which is fantastic. They've really been instrumental in a lot of the, the growth and the changes that the agency has under, undergone over the past few years. And there are some jobs open. I'm looking at the page right now. There are some equity and inclusion program specialist positions open. Um, so take a look at that. And also our small business office. So many opportunities, y'all, so many. I wanna chime in with a question, I think more so directed at, at Miracle in your role as like the, the chief of staff um, and working with Megan. So in theory, right, our public administration graduate students, they are learning a lot about a lot. So there's like the quantitative piece, there's policy analysis and research, there is the race and equity piece of this um, and so much more. So in practice, what does it look like for Sound Transit staff to be holding government relations with procurement with also working alongside community members when they're trying to mobilize around um, being displaced, um, thinking about strategically it makes sense to have this you know hub here and then the expansion both north south east and west so there's like a lot of moving pieces to to your work to everyone's work at sound transit so like what does it actually look like in practice during a calendar year like i'm trying to frame it because like yeah. there our, our MPA students graduate with so many different skills that they can leverage at any point in time. They can be generalists or they can like really find their niche in a specific area within a broader organization. Um, so thinking about all the moving parts of the community, plus the government stuff, plus the procurement and contract stuff, um, how does collaboration actually like look within mm -hmm. Sound Transit? Yeah, definitely. So collaboration, is one of our values, you know, we're working on it. And to do this work, it does involve a large amount of collaboration and alignment. Um, as you can imagine, with all the moving pieces, it can get messy, it can get a little bit disheartening sometimes. But it's, if you have the heart for it, and are excited about it, in my position, personally, it's all about gaining that alignment, pulling the right people in. Um, to get that collaboration to happen. And when it does, it's so beautiful, it's so rewarding. Um, but there, uh, one thing that we do do at Sound Transit is our project teams are matrix. So we have a little bit of every single person on a project team. So say the Federal Way Link Extension um, project, which is one of our alignments that's opening in 2024, that team has communications representative on it. There is um, a government and relations specialist um, that is on that project to help with the board members and to help bring the project executives along on the journey. Um, you know, we have our engineers, our designers, um, clearly they're, they're there and our construction managers as well. Um, but it's just, the whole team is, it's just, a lot of people in one team, a matrix team, which helps with the with the collaboration and alignment needed. Um, I don't know if that was the perfect answer, but it can get messy as it is. You've probably seen in any sort of like strategic collaboration or um, class that you're taking, um, but it's all about using those skills that you learned and those resources and those articles and those case studies and taking it and trying to apply it. And it doesn't always fit like you want it to, but um, 
it can help utilizing what you're learning right now does help. And even if it doesn't take just introducing the ideas to people, um, your coworkers and your staff and your leaders and saying, hey, take a look at this, this works somewhere. Maybe we can try piloting it on one of our projects. Um, so there's always that opportunity as well, because you kind of are becoming experts in different different areas. I know there's a lot of little baby areas, but that's what makes up a public agency, right? And so that is it. That is all I have. Thank you. And we do have a question here from Kylie. Um, can you talk more about the values that the agency strives for in Sound Transit's company culture? What is your favorite part about working at Sound Transit? Emily, I'm going to throw that one at you. Sounds good. Um, yeah, the values were, they were introduced, what, a couple of years ago, Miracle? I think uh, 2018, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And at first, I, I didn't... I didn't take it that seriously, not in that like I didn't think they mattered. I just didn't think they were going to be like really incorporated into the work that we were doing. I just kind of thought it was going to be like a soundbite and something that we put on advertising and whatever. But I've really, really been excited to see just how much focus um, gets put on those and how, you know, when you're working on a project or you're in a meeting, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, people make an active effort to kind of bring the work you're you're doing around to the values. So collaboration is a big one. Um, so when you're working on something, the question will be raised like, okay, what other departments can we get involved in this? Who has the information that we might need and how can we share what we have with them? Um, equity and inclusion has been a big source of conversation over the past couple of years. So figuring out how to bring that more into the work that you're doing when you're not necessarily a part of the equity office is another big source of conversation because that's work that we all can and should be doing. Um, so a lot of it just kind of comes down to like, okay, what am I working on and how can it be made to embrace these values and how can I bring those ideas into the work that I'm doing? Um, as far as my favorite part of working there, I didn't really like the people. <laughs> um, the team is great, but also I, it's really, really satisfying because, you know, when we reach a milestone, when we reach a goal, like we open the Northgate station, it's something that we all get to celebrate. Like I didn't build anything. I'm not an engineer. I'm a recruiter. I work in HR. Um, but we still all celebrate it like a collective victory because that's what it is. We all did some piece of helping us get here. So even though I didn't, you know, plan or design anything and I didn't, you know, swing a shovel, like I'm still part of the team and it, it feels like my victory too. <laughs> you did swing a shovel. You swung the recruiting shovel. <laughs> but um, I also wanted to plug... We do have a Values Leadership Council. I was on the previous cohort and the Values Leadership Council sort of helps um, try to ingrain the values and figure out how we can really get our staff to live and breathe the values that we hold. Um, and so one of the ways we've done it is we add a values moment um, at each meet, well, operations does this. We have a values moment at each meeting. So we start with a safety moment, which is also one of our top priorities, safety, physical and emotional safety. Um, and then there's quality, there's inclusion. I mean, I think somebody dropped a link in there, but that's, a, that's one way that we're really trying to push our values and utilize staff to say, okay, how can we make this happen? And how can we get people excited? Um, and on board with, with the values that we've set. And I see a hand, Michaela. Yeah, thank you. Um, I am, again, th thanks for answering my other question about signing up for alerts. I was able to do that after creating an account. Um, in looking at the job postings, there's the date that the posting was listed, but no closing date on a lot of them. And I know it's always better to apply to jobs as soon as possible, but I was wondering if you had any other um, advice on the timing, given you know, knowing that we're probably um, applying to other jobs too and have a few to juggle. 
Um, as far as the board goes, uh, we a couple years ago we did away with closing dates for the jobs, so now they're just open until filled. So um, if you see something up on the board, um, it means it you know 99% of the time is still active. Um, so definitely get your application in as soon as you can. Um, but as far as the amount of time that it's going to take between your application and the next step in the process. That can really vary just depending on, um, you know, the work level of the hiring manager. Sometimes they think they're ready to move to full steam ahead with interviews and then something goes sideways on a project that they're working on. So we have to put a delay on it. So um, we try to keep everything moving as quickly as we can, but sometimes there is a delay. Um, but if you see it up on the board and it's something you're interested in, absolutely apply as soon as you can. Thank you. Yeah. And definitely connect with us on LinkedIn so we can help, you know, help you out. Any other final questions? We could probably understand one more, one or two more. Not seeing anything else. So to close us out, if you are one of the students here who have signed up for um, informational interviews, the Teams link has already been sent to you in advance. If you want to take advantage of the remaining spots, please let me know. I'm happy to send you that Teams link. Um, with the housekeeping items that I had shared earlier around the remaining career events for the winter quarter. I am dropping the link tree so you can see the RSVP forms for City of Seattle, um, Dr. Kiyoko's uh, careers in public finance um, info session, and then our um, strategic planning and budgeting um, Arizona governor's office uh, opportunities are going to be on link tree shortly. Um, Miracle and Emily is connecting with you on LinkedIn appropriate if folks want to continue the conversation. Absolutely, please do. I'm on mute. Yes, of <laughs> course, please do. Please do. Um, and then are you sending out our names to them or do you want me to just drop it in the chat? I can drop uh, you're both welcome to drop your contact in the Zoom chat. And if with your permission, I'm also happy to attach the contact information with the Zoom recording for all of our registrants who RSVP'd on Zoom so they have that accessible as well. Um, but yeah, thank you, Sound Transit, for coming through to speak with our students. Thank you, students, for engaging with our employer partners. Um, I'm going to be closing out the space in a few minutes just to transition us over into Microsoft Teams. Thank you so much for listening to us and coming and joining. It's always exciting to, to speak to new you know, people embarking on their employment journey, new graduates. So thank you so much. There's so many opportunities. Apply. <laughs> Thank you so much for having us. It was great chatting with all of you. And then we'll see some of you in a few minutes. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thanks. Stop recording.